For several centuries, Australia has been waging a war whose enemies are animals, one of them rabbits. Today, you will learn about the most destructive biological invasion in Australia. According to a recent study, it all started in 1859 with a wealthy landowner named Thomas Austin, who brought 13 wild rabbits to his estate in 1859 Melbourne, according to some sources to hunt them, others to breed them anyway. With reproduction in rabbits, everything is especially good. Austin allowed them to roam freely around the estate, and the animals took advantage of such luxurious conditions. After only three years, these 13 rabbits turned into a thousand, and they continued to reproduce. And after 50 years, these cute pets of a rich man spread across the continent. This event caused a catastrophe in Australia. Rabbits showed the highest rate of colonization as an introduced mammal ever recorded. It is worth noting that Austin was not the first person to bring rabbits to Australia. At least 90 more were brought over the next 70 years but it was the descendants of those 13 rabbits that eventually came to dominate the continent. Rabbits are an invasive species, and invasive species almost always harm any established ecosystem. These cute and harmless rabbits destroy crops, and in such quantities that it leads to soil, erosion, rabbits not only damaged Australian arable land, but also contributed to the extinction of native plant and animal species. Rabbits from Austin's pets turned out to be very well adapted to survival in the wild. They had a large number of wild ancestors, and the genes of these ancestors told them how to avoid predators and survive in difficult terrain. They turned out to be very adaptive. All they needed for life was suitable soil to dig holes and short grass to graze in Australia. They found both all that was left was to reproduce, and wild rabbits did an excellent job of this. They are known for their ability to reproduce all year round, starting from a fairly young age. Just imagine, more than four litters a year, in each litter up to five rabbits, their number grew exponentially after 70 years. These 13 rabbits bred up to 10 billion. This is an absolute record reproduction of mammals on our land. Yes, it's a whole army and something had to be done with this army government. Researchers, biologists, farmers, and many others took steps to get rid of invasive rabbits. This is what a relatively small catch looked like after a rabbit hunt. But even it did not harm the population. The rabbits reproduced faster than they could be caught. It all started with fences. Moreover, the government even ordered the construction of such a fence which stretched across the whole of Western Australia from north to south. However, the fence did not work. An artist of that time clearly depicted how ineffective the rabbit fence turned out to be. Also, farmers destroyed rabbit burrows and trying to control the population in this way. Destruction of the burrow. Lay rabbits a place where they can safely reproduce and raise babies, but in the end, the destruction of the norms did not work either. In 1950, the government turned to biocontrol. They released rabbits in Southeast Australia with myxomatosis, an acute viral disease specific to this species. By the way, it is believed that the pathogen of this disease was the first virus that was deliberately introduced into the wild to kill animals. And although this virus did lead to the death of many rabbits in Australia, they eventually simply developed immunity again. It did not help. Something had to be done. Here is a shot of poisonous rabbit bait being loaded onto a plane. This was filmed in 1965. And here, rabbits are being blown up. Australia really tried everything they could think of. And yet people managed to find a way to defeat the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus, which was transmitted by flies and killed rabbits within 48 hours of infection. Scientists turned to the virus in 1996, and it soon destroyed 90% of the rabbit population in arid regions. Since flies carry the virus, the disease did not affect rabbits that lived in cooler, wetter regions. In addition, over time, rabbits began to develop resistance to this pathogen. What have we come to in the end? The colonization of Australia by wild rabbits is one of the most iconic and destructive biological invasions in human history. Despite all human attempts to somehow cope with the animals, today Australia is home to about 200 million wild rabbits.
they still threaten about 300 species of plants and animals and annually cost the Australian economy $200 million in damage to agriculture. It would seem that the takeover of Australia by rabbits sounds quite frightening and absurd. At the same time, what do you think is the reason for this happening? How is this possible? 